welcome to Grace Episcopal Church in Winfield, Kansas. I'm Mother Lori Lewis, the rector here at Grace, as well as at Trinity Episcopal Church in our Kansas City, Kansas. We're very glad you're here. Also serving in today's worship is Mother Kathy Swain, the assisting priest at both Grace and Trinity. She will be offering the Liturgy of the Word. That's the first half of the service when when we focus on the Word of God. And Deacon Karen Deal, she will be proclaiming the gospel lesson for us today, as well as preparing the table for Holy Communion and dismissing us out into the world. This is a liturgy of Holy Eucharist Rite to from the Episcopal Book of Common Prayer. There is an online link where you can find the prayer book, or you can go to our websites and download a copy of the bulletin um, to walk through the service. But I'm going to be putting all the people's responses on the screen as well, so you may uh, relax and allow the beauty of this service to carry you if you're unfamiliar with it at all. Now we will turn to Mother Kathy and the opening acclamation. Good morning, and let us begin our celebration of Holy Eucharist, Rite 2. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us join together as we pray, Canticle 13, the Song of Praise. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of the temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths. In the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplication of your people, and in our time grant us your peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now let us hear from the Word of God. A reading from Deuteronomy beginning in the 18th chapter and the 15th verse. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words of that prophet shall speak in my name. I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, or who presumes to speak in my name, a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Let us pray Psalm 111 together. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all whom delight in them. His work is full of majesty and splendor, and his righteousness endures forever. He makes his marvelous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gives food to those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice, and all his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who act accordingly have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians beginning with chapter 8 and the first verse. Now, concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, hence as to eating of foods offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there are many so, they may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords. Yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things are all things and for whom we exist. In one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone who, however, who has this knowledge ever since since some have become so accustomed to idols until now they still think of the food they eat as offered to to an idol their conscience being weak is defiled food will not bring us close to god there, we are no worse off it off if we We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care, but take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you who possess this knowledge eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to point of of eating food sacrificed to idols. So, so by your knowledge, those weak believers from whom, G- from whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is, co- is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. We come together in love, the love of our loving, liberating, life-giving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The last time that I shared the good news with you was on the baptism of our Lord. The last two weeks we've heard sermons from Mother Kathy and Deacon Karen. When I spoke to you last about the baptism of Jesus from the Gospel of Mark, I talked about how the heavens were torn open and that God was breaking boundaries. In fact, I I used a quote that uh, God's unruly behavior was running loose through history and the ministry of Jesus. Well, that breaking boundaries, that breaking in into our world of the kingdom of God, of God's presence, is going to be found throughout Mark's gospel. Now, we remember Mark's purpose. Mark was the first gospel written, and it's the shortest gospel because it actually wasn't written to be read. The gospel was composed to be memorized and the story told over and over again. And the way a gospel opens is really important to also understanding the purpose of that gospel writer. So Mark's gospel at the very beginning opened with Jesus' baptism when the Holy Spirit descended, filled Jesus. And then it says that the Spirit drove him into the wilderness where he faced the temptations of Satan. And then we have last week's reading where he comes back and he calls his first disciples. But then we have his first act of public ministry as reported by Mark. In Matthew's gospel, the first act of public ministry for Jesus is the Sermon on the Mount. So that discipleship 101, if you will, is is how he opens his ministry. The first act of public ministry in Luke is Jesus' sermon at Nazareth, his hometown, where they reject him. So that's important to the thread and arc of Luke's gospel. In the gospel of John, it's a party. It's the wedding at Cana where Jesus turns water into wine. So this first act of his public ministry speaks to His Christology, that he is Christ, that he is God, with these signs, or what we call miracles. 
Now in Mark's gospel, the first act of Jesus' ministry is an exorcism. So here's the scene in today's gospel. Jesus uh, is in Capernaum. He um, visits the synagogue. Apparently he has a reputation of being a rabbi, a teacher. The way the synagogue would work in those times is they they didn't have a, a resident pastor if you will. There wasn't a rabbi in charge of everything. For their services on the Sabbath, it was what rabbi is here that has a word to share, if you will. So Jesus apparently has a reputation as a rabbi, as a teacher, and he gets up and teaches. And they were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Now remember, at Jesus' baptism, the heavens were torn open, the Holy Spirit dive bombs Jesus, and the kingdom is brought near. That boundary is crossed. So he has this authority that the people in the synagogue at Capernaum recognize. That in the synagogue, on that Sabbath, was someone else. Darkness, uncleanness was there. In a man who was possessed by an unclean spirit, Mark tells us. On the Sabbath, in the synagogue, was an unclean spirit. And that unclean spirit also recognized the authority of Jesus. But unlike the people who heard him teach, who were just amazed at this authority that they perceived, the unclean spirit is scared. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. The unclean spirit recognized and named the authority by which Jesus was there. Jesus rebukes the unclean spirit and demands the spirit to come out of this man, and the man convulses and writhes, and the spirit leaves, and he's finally in his right mind again. And then the people say, what is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him then his fame really began to spread. So what's the boundary being crossed here? It's a spiritual boundary. Jesus is crossing that spiritual boundary between the Holy Spirit, with which he is filled, and the unclean spirit that possesses this man. And declares to all who are witnessing, through his action, that those boundaries don't exist anymore. The power and authority of God through the Holy Spirit is here on this earth now. No longer do the unclean spirits get to rule the roost. But the kingdom of God has come near. It's here. So in thinking of this gospel lesson, it occurred to me this this juxtaposition of the holy, the Holy Spirit, and the unclean, the unclean spirit. We are, rightfully so, in my opinion, we are obsessed with cleanliness right now. This pandemic, this coronavirus has highlighted for us our need to protect one another through cleanliness, which means we're assuming the uncleanness of everything around us. We have a paranoia, um, a phobia about the uncleanness around us. Now, I said 
rightfully so, in my opinion. I mean, we need to be careful. We need to have a heightened understanding and practice of cleanliness. This virus has made that clear. But we've also learned through the pandemic, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, we didn't want to touch anything. And now science has shown us that actually the virus does live on objects. But as long as we wash our hands and don't touch our eyes, nose, or mouth without washing our hands, we're unlikely to catch this virus from a surface. But it's highlighted for me the obsession we have with assuming things are dirty and unclean. That we're just, our frame of reference just goes towards that assumption. And I want, from this gospel, I want to turn our assumptions a little bit about the world around us. Jesus went into the synagogue on that Sabbath and taught. And the people recognized his authority because of the holy, the holy spirit that filled him. The unclean spirit recognized that, but that's not the focus. The focus is on the holy. So how can we, during this time when we are in this pandemic, what is one thing that we can take away this week? from this gospel lesson, where the boundary, the spiritual boundary of the holy and the unclean has been crossed and Christ is with us and we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. Today, January 31st, is the day for the annual meetings of Grace, Winfield, and Trinity, Ark City. The annual meeting is a time when we look back at the past year and um, celebrate the ministries we've carried out, and we plan for the mission and ministry of the coming year. Unfortunately, our human nature wants to take us to an assumption of bad news. And the annual meeting is a time when we say no, we focus on the holy. The optimism that we have every reason to believe things are going to change big time in 2021. But it's a time that instead of assuming the unclean spirits will thwart our efforts, we can rely on the promise of the Holy, the promise of the Holy Spirit to guide us. We have every reason to be optimistic and to know that we are beloved of God and we've got to tell everyone out there they're beloved. No matter what uncertainty rises, no matter what fears rise up within you, Remember, you are holy. We are holy, and we are carrying out the mission of Jesus, crossing those spiritual boundaries that exist all around us. We're crossing the boundaries of hate and judgment and crossing them with the love of our loving, liberating, life-giving God, and that's our mission, no matter how uncertain things feel. So remember to focus on the holy and know that the authority of the Holy Spirit will take care of the unclean. Amen. Let us recite the summary of our faith in the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God. 
begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray for the Most Reverend Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, and for the Episcopal branch of the Jesus Movement. We pray for the Right Reverend Kathleen Bascom, our bishop, and the Diocese of Kansas. In the Anglican Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Burundi. In the World Council of Churches Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the people of Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Norway, and Sweden. In the Kansas Cycle of Prayer, we pray for Grace Chanute. You raised up for us Moses and Miriam and all the prophets and sent to us Jesus, your only son, that we might hear his voice and heed his teaching. In the assembly of the faithful, I will give thanks to the Lord. Born of Blessed Mary for our redemption, Christ has brought us the knowledge which leads to liberty that we might extend to all the freedom in which we walk. Greater the deeds of the Lord, studied by all who delight in God. You have lifted up your church to be a beacon and witness, chasten our error and strengthen our good that we might fulfill our calling, praying especially for the witness of our parish, our laity, and our clergy. God's righteousness endures forever. As you release the man from his unclean spirit in Capernaum, so cleanse our lives of every wrong and work to heal our sick, remembering especially those for whom we now pray. that we may praise your name in gladness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Make us attentive to the needs of the poor, active on behalf of children at risk, strong for the underserved elderly, and alert to make a difference in our community, nation, and world, interceding for our President, our Congress, Supreme Court, and all of the instruments of government. The works of the Lord are faithfulness and justice. Give us a voice for human rights, concern for the unlawfully imprisoned, and the will to serve justice in Christ's name. The works of the Lord are done in truth and equity. As our Lord spoke with authority, assist us to find our voice that we might proclaim the gospel in word and works. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. God's praise endures. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen.
Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. And Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Again, I welcome you. I'm so glad you have found us on the internet or perhaps someone shared a link with you. Please consider subscribing to the joint YouTube channel for Grace and Trini, Trinity here um, on YouTube. Or if you're watching this on Facebook, please um, like and follow us. Uh, Grace and Trinity each have their own Facebook page. And a new Facebook page that I invite you to please like and follow is the page for our minster. That's this part of the Diocese of Kansas. Um, our uh, South by Southwest minster includes Trinity Ark City, Grace Winfield, St. Jude's Wellington, and St. Andrew's Derby. And we have created a joint Facebook page because we're starting to do a lot of things together. And one of those things is our Compline prayers um, every evening. And that is live streamed now on that Minster Facebook page. Then later after the live streaming, it is shared to the different church Facebook pages. So if you haven't liked and followed uh, the Minster page, you'll get notified from the church page. But please do, like and follow the Minster page too, so you'll be notified when uh, live streaming is occurring. Uh, and Compline is around, I think, 8.30 every evening. It's a wonderful way um, to bring your mind um, from your busy, hectic day and focus on God and God's blessings. Other ways that we are still ministering and worshiping and fellowshipping include um, our uh, every Sunday morning we have Zoom coffee hour. Um, so if you're a member of the church or you're um, a friend of the church and would like to get the link to that Zoom coffee hour, subscribe to our newsletter because that link it comes out in our um, e-newsletter every week. Um, and if you are on our list but can't find those emails, please um, contact us, contact our parish administrator who can help you walk through how to get us in your contacts so your email will stop filing our newsletters away where they're hard to find. So besides Compline and Zoom Coffee Hour and this Sunday worship, we also gather each Sunday for lawn chair morning prayer. And right now, through this winter, we have been gathering at the, in the courtyard at Grace at the corner of 8th and Millington. Join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Um, even when it's cold, it's been wonderful. Um, so as the temperatures are rising, those of you that told me, I'll come when the temperatures are over 50, start watching your weather forecast, and we look forward to seeing you. And of course, we welcome your support of the kingdom work we are carrying out at Grace and Trinity. Please consider sharing of your abundance with the kingdom work we carry out. You can donate by mailing a check, 
or going online. Right now, our online donations are taken care of through our diocesan webpage, but we are soon to have our own processing. Um, so watch for further e details on that. It's, it's coming. We're almost there. So today, as I mentioned in my sermon, is annual meeting Sunday. The meeting starts uh, promptly at 2 p.m. We are meeting via Zoom. Now, a number of you said you were willing to join the meeting on Zoom, but you would need some training. At 1 o'clock, the Zoom room will be opened, and we have uh, emailed and mailed out to those who requested it very uh, detailed instructions on how to join Zoom. So at 1 o'clock, please look through those instructions and get connected. So then we have time before the 2 o'clock meeting that you can call Mother Kathy or, or Deacon Karen. They are waiting uh, for your calls from 1 to 2, and they will help you get connected if there are any problems. So please um, connect as early as 1 o'clock. Make sure you can, and then you can just leave it open and go make a cup of coffee and be ready for our meeting at 2. Uh, the goal is to be done in an hour at 3. Following the joint annual meetings of Grace and Trinity, um, Grace members will stay on for a brief meeting um, concerning the Seabury Properties. This is a, another nonprofit entity that Grace uh, must have a, a, a meeting for. And so they just need to elect some officers. So stay on the call after the joint church annual meeting. So much is going on. So much is happening. Please stay in touch. And I hope that you will sign up to receive our weekly e-newsletter. We've been, our hope is to send two emails a week, one with announcements around Tuesday, and then one with all the links you need for worship every Friday. Now, it is our custom to pray each week over those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. Please join with me. O oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your children as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So now as we turn our hearts and minds to the altar of the Lord and Holy Communion, remembering that we still receive the sacrament, we receive it spiritually in our hearts during this time when we cannot partake of it physically. Give thanks to God with your whole heart, for the Lord is gracious and full of compassion, and his praise endures forever. Amen.
we continue with the great Thanksgiving Eucharistic Prayer C. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Sarah, Rachel, and Rebecca, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Now, let us join together in our prayer to receive this sacrament spiritually. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you physically in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. communion prayer of thanksgiving. Together, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may the peace that passes all our understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of God's Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you, shine through you to those around you, and remain with you always. Amen.
Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.